Okay, tonight is the 1st of August, uh, 2011, and this is the 16th night. We're talking on the Diga Nikaya Suttas. Uh, now we come to Sutta number 21, Sakapanha Sutta. Uh, this is about Saka Devaraja who came to ask questions uh, from, uh, to the Buddha. Uh, thus have I heard, once the Lord was staying in Magadha to the east of Rajagaha, by a Brahmin village called Ambasanda, to the north of the village on Mount Vedia, in the Indasala cave. And at that time, Saka Devaraja felt a strong desire to see the Lord. And Saka thought, where is the blessed Lord, Samasambuddha, now staying? Then perceiving where the Lord was, Saka said to the 33 gods, gentlemen, the Blessed Lord is staying in Magadha, etc., in the Indasala cave. How would it be if we were to go and visit the Lord? Very good, Lord, and may good fortune go with you, replied the 33 gods. Then Saka said to Panchasika of the Gandabas, The Blessed Lord is staying in Magadha, in the Indasala cave. I propose to go to visit him. Very good Lord, said Panchasika, and taking his yellow baluva wood lute, he followed in attendance on Saka. And just as swiftly as a strong man might stretch forth his flexed arm or flex it again, Saka, surrounded by the 33 gods and attended by Panchasika, vanished from the heaven of the 33 and appeared in Magadha on Mount Vedia. Then a tremendous light shone over Mount Vedia illuminating the village of Ambasanda. So great was the power of the gods, so that in the surrounding villages they were saying, Look, Mount Vedia is on fire today. It's burning, it's in flames. What is the matter that Mount Vedia and Ambasanda are lit up like this? And they were so terrified that their hair stood on end. Then Saka said, Panchasika, it is hard for the likes of us to get near the Tathagatas when they are enjoying the bliss of meditation and therefore withdrawn. But if you, Panchasika, were first to attract the ear of the Blessed Lord, then we might afterwards be able to approach and see the Blessed Lord, Samasambuddha. Very good, Lord, said Panchasika. And taking his yellow baluva wood lute, he approached the Indasala cave, thinking as far as this is neither too far nor too near to the Lord, and he will hear my voice. He stood to one side. Then to the strains of his lute, he sang these verses extolling the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Arahants, and love. He said, Lady, your father Timbaru greet, O sunshine fair, I give him honour due. By whom was I a maid as fair as you, who are the cause of all my heart's delight? Delightful as the breeze uh, to one who sweats, or as a cooling draught to one who thirsts. The radiant beauty is to me as dear as the Dhamma is to the Arahans. Just as medicine to him who is ill, or nourishment to one who is starving still. Bring me, gracious lady, sweet release with water cooled from my consuming flames. The elephant, oppressed by summer heat, seeks out a lotus pool upon which float petals and pollen of that flower. So into your bosom sweet I'd plunge, as an elephant urged by the goat, pays no heed to pricks of lance and spear. So I, unheeding, know not what I do, intoxicated by your beauteous form. By you my heart is tightly bound in bonds. All my thoughts are quite transformed and I can no longer find my former cause. I'm like a fish that's caught on baited hook. Come embrace me, maiden fair of thighs. Seize and hold me with your lovely eyes. Take me in your arms is all I ask. My desire was slight at first, O maid, of waving tresses, but it grew apace, as grow the gifts that Arahans receive. Whatever merit I have gained by gifts to those noble ones, May my reward when it ripens be your love most fair. As the Sakyan sun in jhana wrapped, intent and mindful, seeks the deathless goal, thus intent I seek your love, my son. 
Just as that sage would be rejoiced if he were to gain supreme enlightenment, so I rejoice to be made one with you. If Sakha, Lord of 33 gods, were perchance to grant a boon to me, it's you I'd crave, my love for you so strong. Your father made so wise, I venerate, like a salt tree fairly blossoming, for his offspring's sake so sweet and fair. Come here for a moment. Uh. So you see, uh, these uh, devas and devis, uh, they also fall in love. Uh, and sometimes what they want also they cannot get. Uh. When he heard this, the Lord said, Panchasika, the sound of your strings blends so well with your song, and your song with the strings, that neither prevails excessively over the other. When did you compose these verses on the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Arhans, and love? And he said, Lord, it was when the Blessed One, when the Blessed Lord was staying on the bank of the river Naranjara, under the goat herd's banyan tree, prior to his enlightenment. At that time, I fell in love with the Lady Badda, bright as the sun, the daughter of King Timbaru of the Gandabas. But the lady was in love with somebody else. It was Sikadi, the son of Matali, the charioteer, whom she favoured. And when I found that I could not win the lady by any manner of means, I took my yellow baluva wood lute and went to the home of King Timbaru of the Gandabas, and there I sang these verses. And Lord, having heard the verses, the lady Badda Surya Vachasa said to me, Sir, I have not personally seen that blessed Lord, though I heard of him when I went to the Sudama Hall of the 33 Gods to dance. And since, sir, you praise the blessed Lord so highly, let us meet today. And so, Lord, I met the lady, not then, but later. Then Saka thought, Panchasika and the Lord are in friendly conversation. So he called to Panchasika, My dear Panchasika, salute the blessed Lord for me, saying, Lord, Saka Devaraja, together with his ministers and followers, pays homage at the feet of the blessed Lord. Very good, Lord, said Panchasika, and did so. And, <coughs> and the Buddha said, Panchasika, may Saka, Devaraja, his ministers and followers be happy, for they all desire happiness, devas, humans, asuras, nagas, gandabas, and whatever other humans, asu and whatever other groups of beings there are. For that is the way that the Tathagatas greet such mighty beings. After this greeting, Saka entered the Indasala cave, saluted the Lord, and stood to one side. And the 33 gods with Panchasika did the same. Stop here for a moment. Uh. So you see just now at the paragraph 1.7, uh, so these uh, devas and devis, they also dance in the hall, uh, just like human beings. Uh. Then in this Indasala cave, the rough passages became smooth, the narrow paths became wide, and in the pitch dark cavern it became bright, owing to the power of the devas. And the Lord said to Saka, It is wonderful, it is marvelous, that the venerable Kosia, with so much, so many things to do, should come here. And Saka Devaraja said, Lord, I have long wished to visit the Blessed Lord, but I have always been so busy on behalf of the 33 that I was unable to come. Once the Blessed Lord was staying at Savati in the Salala hut, and I went to Savati to see the Lord. Stop here for a moment. So you see Saka Devaraja being the Devaraja, king of the devas, he's also got a lot of responsibilities, very busy, just like human beings. At that time, the Blessed Lord was seated in some form of meditation, and King Vesavana's wife, Bunjati, was waiting on him, venerating him with palms together. I said to her, Lady, please salute the Blessed Lord for me and say, Saka Devaraja, with his ministers and followers, pays homage at the, laid, at the Lord's feet. But she said, Sir, it is not the right time to see the Blessed Lord. He is in retreat. Well then, lady, when the Blessed Lord rises from his meditation, please tell him what I have said. Lord, did the lady salute you on my behalf? And does the Lord remember what she said? And the Buddha said, She did salute me, Devaraja. 
and I remember what she said. I also remember that it was the sound of your reverence chariot wheels that roused me from my meditation. Stop here for a moment. Nah. So when Sakadeva Raja left in his chariot, nah, the sound of the chariot wheels nah, made the Buddha uh, get up from his, uh, get out of his meditation. Nah. Lord, those gods who arose in the heaven of the 33 before I did have told me and assured me that whenever a Tathagata, a Samasambuddha, Arahan arises in the world, the ranks of Devas increase and those of the Asuras decline in numbers. In fact, I have witnessed this myself. There was, Lord, right here in Kapilavatu, a Sakyan girl called Gopi Gopika, who had faith in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, and who observed the precepts scrupulously. She rejected the status of a woman and developed the thought of becoming a man. Then after her death, at the breaking up of the body, she went to a happy destination, being reborn in a heaven state among the 33 gods as one of our sons, becoming known as Gopaka, the Deva's son. Also, there were three monks who, having observed the holy life under the blessed Lord, had been reborn in the inferior condition of Gandabas. They lived indulging in the pleasures of the five senses as our attendants and servants. Stop here for a moment. Uh. So you see these Gandabas uh, in the heaven of the 33. Uh, they are attendants and servants uh, to the uh, 33 gods, uh, the devas of the Tavatimsa heaven. At this, Gopaka rebuked them, saying, what were you about, sirs, that you did not listen to the Blessed Lord's teaching? I was a woman who had faith in the Buddha. I rejected the status of a woman and was reborn among the 33 gods and am, and, and am known as Gopaka, the Deva's son. But you, after having observed the holy life under the Blessed Lord, have been reborn in the inferior condition of Gandabas. It is a sorry sight for us to see our fellows in the Dhamma reborn in the inferior condition of Gandabas. And being thus rebuked, two of the Devas immediately developed mindfulness and so attained to the realm of, of the retinue of Brahma. But one of them remained addicted to sensual pleasures. Stop here for a moment. So when this Gopaka rebuked the three ex-monks uh, who were born as Gandabas, uh, two of them felt ashamed uh, and they meditated. Uh, they meditated and attained the jhana, first jhana, I was reborn in the Brahma realm. But the, the, the other one, he was enjoying life as a Gandaba, sensual pleasures, so he refused to practice sadhana. Gopaka spoke, Disciple once of him who sees, the name I bore then, Gopika, in Buddha Dhamma, firmly trusting, I served the Sangha cheerfully. For loyal service paid to him, see me now, a Sakha son, Sakya Putta, mighty in the threefold heaven, resplendent, Gopaka my name. Then former monks I saw, who had reached no higher than Gandaba's rank, who before had human birth and led the life the Buddha taught. We supplied them food and drink and waited on them in our homes. Had they no ears that they thus bless, still could not grasp the Buddha's Dhamma. Easy for himself, each for himself must understand that Dhamma taught by him who sees and well proclaimed, I serving you heard the Noble One's good words, and so I am born a Sakha son, mighty in the threefold heaven, and resplendent, whereas you Though you serve the prince of men and led the matchless life he taught, have reappeared in humble state and not attained your proper rank. A sorry sight it is to see our one's, fellow, one's Dhamma fellow sunk so low that Gandaba spirits, you must, you but come to wait upon the gods, while as for me, I am transformed from household life and female. I am now reborn a male, a god, rejoicing in celestial bliss. Come here for a moment. Huh? So here you see, huh? he rebuked them. He said, had they no ears that they thus blessed, still could not grasp the Buddha's Dhamma. Uh, so you see, uh, listening to the Dhamma is extremely important. Uh, just meditating, uh, uh, the, the, 
just by meditation and you don't understand the Dhamma, you can't get a high state. Uh, if you do both, uh, it's the best. Uh, when thus rebuked by Gopaka, a disciple true of Gotama, in sore distress they all replied, Alas, let's go and strive amain, and be no longer other slaves. And of the three, two struggled hard, and bore in mind the teacher's word. They purified their hearts of lust, perceiving peril in desires, and like the elephant that burst all restraining bonds, they broke the fetters and the bonds of lust those fetters of the evil one, so hard to overcome. And thus the very gods, the thirty-three, with Indra and Pajapati, who sat enthroned in council hall, these two heroes, passions purged, outstripped, and left them far behind. On seeing which, Vasava, dismayed, chief amidst that throng of gods, cried, See how these of lesser rank outstrip the gods, the thirty-three. Then hearing of his ruler's fears, Gopaka said to Vasava, Lord Indra, in the world of men, a Buddha called the Sakyan sage has gained the mastery of lust, and these his pupils who had failed in mindfulness when claimed by death have now regained it with my help. Though one of them is left behind and still among Gandhava's dwells, these two on highest wisdom set in deep absorption spurn the gods. Let no disciple ever doubt that truth may yet be realized by those who dwell in these abodes. To him who crossed the flood and made an end of doubts, our homage due, the Buddha, Victor, Lord, we give. Even here they gain the truth and so have passed beyond to greater eminence. Those two have gained a higher place than this in realms of Brahma's retinue. And we have come, O Lord, in hope that we may gain that truth, and if the Lord will give us leave to put our questions to the blessed Lord. So you see, uh, these uh, two devas, uh, they practice hard in their meditation, uh, and they gave up this uh, lasa. Uh, in the heavens, uh, it's very difficult to give up lust, uh, sensual pleasures, uh, because there's so much sensual pleasures. Uh, uh, so, but they, they felt shame, uh, felt ashamed, so they practiced hard uh, and attained the jhanas. Uh, uh. Then the Lord thought, Saka has lived a pure life for a long time. Whatever questions he may ask will be to the point and not frivolous and he will be quick to understand my answers. So the Blessed Lord replied to Saka in this verse, Ask me, Saka, all that you desire. On what you ask, I'll put your mind at rest. Being thus invited, Saka Devaraja put his first question to the Lord. By what fetters, sir, are beings bound? Gods, humans, asuras, nagas, gandabas, and whatever other kinds there may be, whereby, although they wish to live without hate, harming, hostility or malignity, and in peace, yet they live in hate, harming one another, hostile and malign. This was Saka's first question to the Lord. And the Lord replied, Ruler of the gods, it is the bonds of jealousy and avarice, Isa Macharya, that bind being so that though they wish to live without hate, they yet live in hate, harming one another. Hostile and malign, this was the Lord's reply. And Saka, delighted, exclaimed, So it is, Lord, so it is, welfarer. Through the Lord's answer, I have overcome my doubt and got rid of uncertainty. Stop here for a moment. Nah. So, Saka Devaraja says, lah, Most beings, nah, we want peace. Lah. We don't want to fight and quarrel with each other. And yet we do. Nah. Why? And then the Buddha said, nah, Because of greed and jealousy. Nah. Because of greed, nah, we want this, we want that. Nah. And when we see nah, that other people have more than us, nah, we are jealous. Nah. Uh, this is quite obvious nah, in the world. Nah. You can see all around you, nah, nah. people are greedy. And uh, when they have less than what you have, nah, they are jealous of you nah, and try to harm you in some way. Nah. Mm. Then Saka, having expressed his appreciation, asked another question. But sir, what gives rise to jealousy and avarice? What is their origin? 
How are they born? How do they arise? Owing to the presence of what do they arise? Owing to the absence of what do they not arise? And the Buddha said, Jealousy and avarice, Devaraja, take rise from like and dislike. This is their origin. This is how they are born, how they arise. When these are present, they arise. When these are absent, they do not arise. Uh, so it's because of liking and disliking uh, that uh, this uh, desire arises and, and when you cannot get what you want, uh, then there is dislike uh, and there is jealousy. Uh, uh, this uh, like is piya, dislike is up piya. But sir, what gives rise to like and dislike? And the Buddha said, owing to the presence, uh, no, he continued, what gives rise to like and dislike? Owing to the presence of what do they arise? Owing to the absence of what do they not arise? And the Buddha said, they arise, Devaraja, from desire. Owing to the presence of desire, Chanda, they arise. Owing to the absence of desire, they do not arise. And then again he asked, but sir, what gives rise to desire? And the Buddha said, desire, Devaraja, arises from thinking, Vitaka. When the mind thinks about something, desire arises. When the mind thinks about nothing, desire does not arise. But sir, what gives rise to thinking? Thinking, Devaraja, arises from the tendency to proliferation, Papancha. When this tendency is present, thinking arises. When it is absent, thinking does not arise. And he asked, Well, sir, what practice has that monk undertaken who has reached the right way with, which is needful and leading to the cessation of the tendency to proliferation? And the Buddha said, Devaraja, I declare there are two kinds of happiness, the kind to be pursued and the kind to be avoided. The same applies to unhappiness and equanimity. Why have I declared this in regard to happiness? This is how I understood happiness. When I observed that in the pursuit of such happiness, unwholesome factors increased and wholesome factors degree, decreased, then that happiness was to be avoided. But when I observed that in the pursuit of such happiness, unwholesome factors decreased and wholesome ones increased, then that happiness was to be sought after. Now of such happiness as is accompanied by thinking and pondering, and of that which is not so accompanied, the latter is the more excellent. The same applies to unhappiness and equanimity. And this ruler of the gods, or Devaraja, is the practice that monk has undertaken, who has reached the right way, leading to the cessation of the tendency to proliferation. And Sakha expresses delight at the Lord's answer. Stop here for a moment. So, the Buddha is saying here <coughs> that there are two kinds of happiness. One is uh, accompanied by thinking and pondering, which is worldly happiness. And that which is not accompanied, that happiness which is not accompanied by thinking and pondering is uh, jhana, especially the second jhana where there is no more vitaka and vichara. Uh, so, uh, for normal people, the ordinary people, uh, uh, there is this tendency to proliferation uh, because they have not tasted uh, the happiness uh, of jhana. So, not knowing the happiness, the bliss of jhana, they like to think. Uh, so, there is this uh, tendency to proliferation. Uh, so they think a lot, no? a lot of people uh, like to think a lot. So because of thinking, uh, because of the tendency to proliferate the mind, to proliferate, uh, that means one thought becomes ten, ten becomes a hundred, hundred becomes a thousand. Uh, so, uh, so one is always thinking, uh, and then because of thinking, uh, there is desire, uh, and because of desire, uh, there is like and dislike. Uh, uh, and because of like and dislike, uh, there is avarice uh, and jealousy. Uh, 
Average, average means uh, uh, strong greed. Nah. Strong greed. And if you cannot uh, get your greed satisfied, nah, then you have jealousy nah. mm. well, because of like and dislike. Nah. Uh. But uh, somebody uh, who has attained jhana and he knows of a bliss uh, which is not accompanied by thinking and pondering, uh, then he prefers not to think. Uh. And when he, he does not think, uh, there is not the, you don't have the tendency of the mind to proliferate. Uh. Uh, so you don't have all this. Uh. You don't have thinking, you don't have desire, you don't have like and dislike, you don't have avarice and jealousy. Uh. Uh. Then Saka, having expressed his appreciation, asked another question. Well, sir, what practice has that monk undertaken who has acquired the restraint required by the Patimoka or the monk's rules? Lah? And the Buddha said, Devaraja, I declare that there are two kinds of bodily conduct, the kind to be pursued and the kind to be avoided. The same applies to conduct of speech and to the pursuit of goals. Why have I declared this in regard to bodily conduct? This is how I understood bodily conduct. When observed that by the performance of certain actions, unwholesome factors increase and wholesome factors decrease, then that form of bodily action was to be avoided. And when I observed that by the performance of such actions, unwholesome factors decrease and wholesome ones increase, then such bodily action was to be followed. That is why I make this distinction. The same applies to conduct of speech and the pursuit of goals. And this, Devaraja, is the practice that Mang has undertaken, who has acquired the restraint required by the rules. And Saka expresses delight at the Lord's answer. So here this is a criterion the Buddha gives eh, uh, on uh, bodily conduct or verbal conduct eh, um, and, and the pursuit of goals, lah, whether you, uh, you want something, eh, whether it's good or not for you, eh, it depends on this law. If unwholesome uh, states increase, eh, and wholesome states decrease, uh, then uh, it is no good. Uh, it's to be avoided. Uh. But if wholesome states increase uh, and unwholesome states decrease, uh, then uh, it is uh, desirable. Uh, you should perform that action uh, or achieve what, uh, that, that, that goal that you want. Uh. So you see in the case of jhana, uh, uh, some people, they make the mistake, uh, they say that it is wrong to indulge in jhana. Jhana is a kind of uh, uh, happiness, a kind of uh, pleasure that is wrong to indulge in. But the Buddha, he says uh, very clearly in the suttas uh, that uh, there are two types of happiness. Uh, sensu the, uh, the happiness that comes from enjoying sensual pleasures uh, and the happiness uh, uh, of jhanic bliss. Uh, and the uh, happiness of sensual pleasures, the Buddha says, uh, he discourages his disciples to enjoy. Why? Because uh, uh, it increases unwholesome states uh, and decreases wholesome states. Uh, and also it ends in sorrow. Uh, worldly happiness, when we enjoy, uh, in the end, uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will suffer. Uh, we become addicted to it. And because everything is impermanent in the world, uh, it will go away. Uh. When it goes away, uh, then we can't stand it uh, because our mind is not cultivated, it's not strong. Uh. But Janik Bliss, uh, the Buddha says, uh, he encourages his disciples to enjoy because he gives four benefits. Uh. Uh, what are the four benefits? Uh, the four fruits of uh, Aryan, the four Aryan stages. Uh, uh, First fruit, which is Sotapanna, second fruit, which is Sakadagamin, third fruit, which is Anagamin, and fourth fruit, which is Arahan. Uh, so there's, this is a very good criterion. Uh, if we want to do something or not to do something, uh, we see uh, whether wholesome states increase or decrease, and wholesome states uh, decrease or increase. Uh, uh. Then Saka asks another question. Well, sir. What practice has that monk undertaken who has acquired control of his sense faculties? And the Buddha said, Devaraja, 
I declare that things perceived by the eye are of two kinds, the kind to be pursued and the kind to be avoided. The same applies to things perceived by the ear, the nose, tongue, body and mind. At this, Sakha said, Lord, I understand in full the true meaning of what the Blessed Lord has outlined in brief. Lord, whatever object perceived by the eye, if its pursuit leads to the increase of unwholesome factors and the decrease of wholesome ones, that is not to be sought after. If its pursuit leads to the decrease of wholesome states and the increase of wholesome ones, such, such an object is to be sought after, and the same applies to things perceived by the ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Thus I understand in full the true meaning of what the Blessed Lord has outlined in brief, and thus through the Lord's answer I have overcome my doubt and got rid of uncertainty. I'll stop here for a moment. So here is the same as the previous one. You use the same criterion. If you see something, and unwholesome states increase and wholesome states decrease, and then you should not see it, like seeing shows uh, uh, and uh, listening to music and all this thing. Uh, so, but if unwholesome states decrease and wholesome states increase, uh, uh, then you can uh, see or hear, etc. Then Saka asks another question, Sir, but then of course uh, you might understand uh, the criterion uh, for monks and for lay people uh, is uh, quite different uh, because lay people uh, you are not uh, willing uh, to uh, walk the path to liberation uh, so lay people uh, uh, expect uh, to enjoy uh, life a bit uh, so they indulge in these things uh. only thing is if you know uh, then at least uh, you know the Dhamma then at least uh, you, you put on your brakes uh, you don't go overboard uh. mm. Then Saka asked another question, Sir, do all ascetics and Brahmins teach the same Dhamma, practice the same Vinaya, want the same thing, and pursue the same goal? And the Buddha said, No, Devaraja, they do not. But why, Sir, do they not do so? The Buddha said, The world, Devaraja, is made up of many and various elements. Such being the case, beings adhere to one or other of these various things, and whatever they adhere to, they become powerfully addicted to and declare, this alone is the truth, everything else is false. Therefore, they do not all teach the same Dhamma, practice the same Vinaya, want the same thing, pursue the same goal. Stop here for a moment. Uh. So here the Buddha is saying, uh, uh, beings are all different, uh, and such being the case, uh, they... Um, adhere uh, or they follow uh, different uh, opinions uh, and whatever they want, uh, they are addicted to, uh, they say this is the best, uh, this alone is the truth. Uh, uh. And then again Saka Devaraja asks, Sir, are all ascetics and Brahmins fully proficient, free from bonds, perfect in the holy life? Have they perfectly reached the goal? And the Buddha said, No, Devaraja. Why is that, sir? And the Buddha said, Only those, Devaraja, who are liberated by the destruction of craving, are fully proficient, freed from the bonds, perfect in the holy life, and have perfectly reached the goal. And Saka rejoiced at the answer as before. Then Saka said, Passion, sir, is a disease, a boil, a dart. It seduces a man, drawing him into this or that state of becoming so that he is reborn in high states or low. Stop here for a moment. Huh? So you see here, huh? the Buddha says, huh? a person can only be, be liberated huh? or enlightened huh? by destroying craving. Huh? So this uh, craving, huh? uh, as Saka says, huh? is a disease. Huh? A dart, a boil, it seduces a man, uh, seduces a woman or so. Uh, so, so is, is uh, craving, uh, passion, uh, is something uh, that makes us enjoy life. Uh, so it's something that's very, very difficult to give up. Uh, that's why very few people want to walk the spiritual path, because it means uh, giving up all that you enjoy. Uh, 
Uh, but they don't understand uh, that when you give up all that you enjoy, uh, you attain a different kind of happiness, uh, a higher kind of happiness uh, that even uh, the low gods, uh, the low devas, uh, those in the sensual realm, uh, sensual desire realm, uh, they have no chance to enjoy, they don't understand. Only those in the Brahma realm upwards uh, who have attained jhana, then only they know of a higher bliss. Uh, uh, when you can attain that kind of uh, higher bliss, uh, the bliss of jhana, then you can be reborn in a very high state, uh, in the form realm or formless realm. Uh, at that time, uh, the, the happiness uh, surpasses uh, the happiness of sensual pleasures. Uh. And uh, Sakadeva Raja continued, uh, Whereas other ascetics and Brahmins of differing viewpoints gave me no chance to ask these questions, the Lord has instructed me at length and thus removed the doubt, the dart of a doubt and uncertainty from me. And the Buddha said, Devaraja, do you admit to having asked the same question of other ascetics and Brahmins? And he said, Yes, Lord. And the Buddha said, Then if you don't mind, please tell me what they said. And he said, I do not mind telling the Blessed Lord or one like him. Then tell me, Devaraja. And he said, Lord, I went to those I considered to be ascetics and Brahmins because of their solitary life in the woods, and I put these questions to them. But instead of giving me a proper answer, they asked me in return, Who are you, Venerable Sir? I replied that I was Saka Devaraja, and they asked me what had brought me there. Then I taught them the Dhamma as... Then I taught them the Dhamma as far as I had heard it and practiced it. But they were very pleased with even that much, and they said, We have seen Saka Devaraja, and he has answered the questions we put to him. And they became my pupils instead of my becoming theirs. But I, Lord, am a disciple of the Blessed Lord. A stream winner am I, not subject to rebirth in states of woe, firmly established and destined for enlightenment. And the Buddha said, Devaraja, do you admit to having ever previously experienced rejoicing and happiness such as you now experience? And he said, Yes, Lord. And what was that about? In the past, Lord, war had broken out between the gods, the devas, and the asuras. And the gods had defeated the asuras. And after the battle, as victor, I thought, Whatever is now the food of the gods, and what is the food of the Asuras, henceforth we shall enjoy both. But Lord, such happiness and satisfaction which was due to blows and wounds does not conduce to dispassion, detachment, cessation, peace, higher knowledge, enlightenment, Nibbana. But that happiness and satisfaction that is obtained by hearing the Dhamma from the Blessed Lord, which is not due to blows and wounds, thus conduce to dispassion, detachment, cessation, peace, higher knowledge, enlightenment, Nibbana. Stop here for a moment. Huh? So here, you see this uh, Saka Devaraja, huh? he went to these ascetics huh? living alone in the forest huh? and tried to ask them some Dhamma. And these people, huh? they, like some, uh, some people, huh? they only want to meditate, huh? they don't want to learn the Dhamma. So huh? they could not... Uh, teach the Dhamma to Saka Devaraja. And then when Saka Devaraja taught them the Dhamma, they became a disciple of Saka Devaraja. But Saka Devaraja thought he wanted to become their disciple. Uh, instead, uh, they become his disciple. Pula. The other thing you notice uh, that these Devas and Asuras, when they fight, uh, and there are blows and wounds. Uh, uh, so. Uh, it's not that they are just uh, chasing each other and making a show. Uh, they actually really, uh, really fight. Uh. That's why when they fight, uh, before the fight, uh, they, are, they, they, they can be very scared. Uh. So the, the devas, uh, Taiko, they will carry up their banner. Uh, and those uh, others uh, see their banner, uh, uh, they get some courage. Uh, uh, the Taiko is with us. Uh. <laughs> the warlord. Uh, uh. But the Buddha says, uh, uh, instead of seeing the warlord's uh, banner, uh, you think of the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, uh, that is more reliable. And then the Buddha said, And Devaraja, what things do you call to mind when you admit to experiencing such satisfaction and happiness as this? And he said, Lord, at such time, six things come to mind at which I rejoice. 
I, who merely as a God exist, have gained the chance by karma of another earthly life. That, Lord, is the first thing that occurs to me. Leaving this non-human realm of gods behind, unerringly I'll seek the womb I wish to find. That, Lord, is the second thing. My problem solved, I'll gladly live by Buddha's Dhamma, controlled and mindful, with clear awareness filled. Lord, is, this is the third thing. And should enlightenment arise in me, as one who knows I'll dwell, and there await my end, that, Lord, is the fourth thing. Then when I leave the human world again, I'll be once more a god and one of highest rank, that, Lord, is the fifth thing. More glorious than devas are the peerless gods, Akanita, among whom dwelling I shall make my final home. That, Lord, is the sixth thing that occurs to me, and these are the six things at which I rejoice. Long I wandered, unfulfilled, in doubt, in quest of the Tathagata. I thought hermits who live secluded and austere must surely be enlightened. I'll seek them. What must I do to gain success, and what cause but leads to failure? But thus asked, they could not tell me how to tread the path. Instead, when they found that I am Devaraja, or king of the gods, they asked me why I had come to them. And I it was who taught them what I knew of Dhamma. And at that rejoicing, they cried, It's Vasava, the Lord we have seen. But now I've seen the Buddha, and my doubts are all dispelled. My fears are allayed. And now to the enlightened one I pay homage due to him who's drawn the dart of craving. To the Buddha, peerless Lord, mighty hero, kinsman of the sun, just as Brahmas worship by the gods, so likewise today we worship you, enlightened one, and teacher unsurpassed, whom none can equal in the human world or in the heavens, dwelling of the gods. <coughs> then Saka Devaraja said to Panchasika of the Gandabas, I'll stop here for a moment. So here you see, uh, Sakadevaraja, uh, because of his psychic power, his great psychic power, uh, he realized six, uh, six things. Uh, uh, one uh, was that uh, he'll be reborn as a human being again. Uh, uh, and then, uh, secondly, uh, uh, when he's going to be reborn as a human being, uh, He'll seek the womb uh, that he wants to be reborn in. Uh. This shows uh, that some of these gods, uh, they have the power to, to seek uh, the family they want to be reborn into. Uh. Uh, and then thirdly, uh, then uh, he'll live by the Dhamma, control and mindful. Uh. Uh, and then uh, fourthly, uh, uh, Should enlightenment arise in me? Uh, there, I think he will become an anagamin uh, because the fifth thing uh, he says, uh, when I leave the human world again, uh, he'll be a god, uh, one of the highest rank. And then uh, the sixth, uh, uh, that he will be reborn in the Akanita heaven. This Akanita uh, is one of the five levels of heaven uh, in the Sudavasa. Sudavasa or pure abodes. Uh, is the heaven uh, where only anagamins, uh, third fruition, Aryas, uh, are reborn. Uh, so he could foresee uh, that uh, one day uh, he'll become an anagamin and be, re be reborn uh, in the Suttavasa heavens. Uh. Then Saka Devaraja said to Panchasika of the Gandabas, My dear Panchasika, you have been of great help to me for gaining the ear of the Blessed Lord. For it was through your gaining his ear that we were admitted to the presence of the Blessed Lord, Arahan Samasambuddha. I will be a father to you, and you shall be king of the Gandabas, and I will give you Bada Surya Vachasa, whom you desired. And then Saka Devaraja touched the earth with his hand and called out three times, Namo Tassa, Ara, uh, Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samasambuddhasa. Called three times. Uh. 
homage to the blessed one arahan sama sambuddha and while he had been speaking in this dialogue the pure and spotless dhamma eye or dhamma vision arose within saka devaraja and he knew whatever things have an origin must come to cessation and the same thing happened to 80000 devas as well such were the questions which saka devaraja was desirous to ask and which the lord answered for him therefore this discourse is called saka's questions uh, as the end of the sutta so you see uh, because this panchasika uh, did his job very well and uh, introduce uh, uh, saka devaraja to the buddha uh, so he said uh, he'll make uh, this panchasika the king of the gandabas uh, previously the uh, father of this uh, badda whom our panchasika desired uh, the, the the father was the king but now uh, sakadevaraja being uh, so powerful uh, he made this uh, panchasika the king of the gandabas uh, so that he could have any maiden he wish uh, among the gandabas uh. so you see uh, uh, like in many suttas uh, you find uh, from listening to the dhamma the spotless dhamma vision arose within saka devaraja that means uh, he attained stream entry la attain the first path la uh, which must uh, become fruit la within the same lifetime la uh, and not only him uh, 80000 devas uh, also uh, attain the dhamma vision uh, became uh, stream uh, attain stream entry la uh, so it's always by listening to the dhamma and getting right view uh, that we attain stream entry uh, no other way uh. mm. so we stop here for tonight it's quite an interesting uh, sutta anything to discuss this from this sutta you find uh, uh, life in the heaven of the 33 uh, is a bit like the human realm huh? uh, you have uh, dancing in the hall you have falling in love and sometimes uh, cannot get the 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 the, the, the ch- your your choice uh, then you have a uh, heartache in the previous sutta there was a sentence here regarding uh, the mark coming to to be the same No, definitely not. If uh, Arahan, uh, Arahan, uh, even all these Aryan stages, uh, they are not reversible. Uh, so, uh, the. because he, to his monks he said the holes of mara kam monks pay good heed so it is not only the arahants ma he is talking about the, all the monks hmm? say again a person can attain arahanthood uh, as a layman but once he becomes an arahant uh, he will never go back to home la uh. has lost the the old self uh, has died na Then, then, 
Not for sure, no, because uh, he doesn't see here uh, how long they took uh, to be reborn in the Brahma's realm. It is not stated immediately. Yeah, but I think mean, if, if this month they are born as they were, it was a very long lifespan, and the Buddha, they are Buddha's True also. Mm. Mm, I don't know how to explain this. Maybe when they attain the jhanas, huh, then uh, with their psychic power, huh, they. Uh, Attain the, the the state of Brahma. Yes, because generally in the Deva realm, uh, the condi conditions are not conducive uh, to striving. Uh, like him, uh, he's so busy, uh, even he wanted to see the Buddha so many times or so, he could not uh, find the time uh, to see the Buddha. So how to practice? Thousands of, he's got thousands of wives uh, following him everywhere. think so because uh, in the intermediate uh, what you're talking about is the intermediate state eh? uh, where he where that being is uh, is conditioned by karma so he can only you know uh, whatever uh, human uh, he can can find uh, he will go into the womb uh. he cannot think oh I'm now in Malaysia I want to go to Hong Kong to be reborn think so because uh, the Buddha says uh, for a person uh, to be reborn together uh, four things must be equal uh, the faith uh, and then the uh, sila morality then the generosity then the wisdom uh. so for example if a person thinks uh, he wants to be uh, reborn as a as a Buddhist uh, uh, but uh, if all these four conditions uh, are not there, uh, then uh, he might not be able to. Uh. But if he understands the Dhamma, attains the Dhamma vision, uh, and he becomes an uh, Arya, then even uh, wherever he's reborn, uh, he will automatically look for the Dhamma. Or if there's no Dhamma, uh, he will by himself practice. Uh. Five influence, that is also. And uh, what it means to 
to the increase in five figures, and that is the cause. Can you understand as that? Yes, but I'm not sure if that is complete, lah. Uh, because uh, wholesome states uh, are states uh, that lead to peace and happiness. Uh, uh, and unwholesome states are states that lead to uh, unhappiness, uh, restlessness and all that. Uh, uh. So, um, they are a bit linked, la, linked to the five hindrances because the five hindrances are the source of our unhappiness and frustration also. La. Okay, shall we stop here?